in the good old gospel way. That's the way I mean to stay. I'm going to wear my armor bright. I'm going to learn to walk upright. I'm going to put on my gospel shoes. And my helmet ever looks so new. I am wearing on the breastplate of Jehovah's righteousness. In the good old gospel way. That's the way I mean to stay. I'm going to wear my armor bright. I'm going to learn to walk upright. I'm going to put on my gospel shoes. And my helmet ever looks so new. I am wearing on the breastplate of Jehovah's righteousness. In the good old gospel way. That's the way I mean to stay. I'm going to wear my armor bright. I'm going to learn to walk upright. I'm going to put on my gospel shoes. And my helmet ever looks so new. I am wearing on the breastplate of Jehovah's righteousness. In the good old gospel way. That's the way I mean to stay. I'm going to wear my armor bright. I'm going to learn to walk upright. I'm going to put on my gospel shoes. And my helmet ever looks so new. I am wearing on the breastplate of Jehovah's righteousness. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Won't you give me that old time religion? Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas. So it's good enough for me. Won't you give me that old time religion? Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. You know if you cut it. You know if you trim it. It's a Pentecostal fire. You know, cut it. No, nobody trim it. It's a Pentecostal fire. Nobody cut it. No, nobody trim it. It's a Pentecostal fire. Huh? Enough for Paul and Silas is good enough for me. Nobody cut it. No, nobody trim it. No, it's a Pentecostal fire. Nobody cut it. No, nobody trim it. Mm, it's a Pentecostal fire. Nobody cut it. No, nobody trim it. It's a Pentecostal fire. It's good enough for Paul and Silas. It's good enough for me. Nobody cut it. No, nobody trim it. It's a Pentecostal fire. Nobody cut it. No, nobody trim it. Mm, it's a Pentecostal fire. Nobody cut it. No, nobody trim it. Mm, it's a Pentecostal fire. It was good enough for Paul and Sight. It's good enough for me. So would they give me that old time religion? Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know our theme said, get back to basics. Reconnect to the foundation. We are not changing it. Praise God. It was good when we got it, Brother Bennett. And when we pass it on to the next generation, it will be just as good. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Someone say, well, may those who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire for devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe. And the lives we live inspire them to obey. And may all who come behind us find us faithful. Praise God. So from the days of Mother White and Mother Russell, amen. From the days of Bishop Wilshire, right down Pastor Stewart, Pastor Leng, we're not changing it. We're not changing it. And that's why we are studying the book of Jude. Because our brother Jude recognized that a time would come when there were those who would be inspiring us to change. And he wrote to warn us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We've already prayed. Praise the name of Jesus. And so we, praise God, we just want to pick up where we left off. But first I want to, again, read this, the first, first six verses of Jude. Um, it said, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserving Jesus Christ and called, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares or before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turned the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denied the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance where you once knew this, how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. And the angel which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, they had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And we may add verse 7, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange pressure, set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Praise God. I would like to end there as I say, God no partial. Praise God, they may be seated. Praise God. And so we've been looking, we looked at first week at the urgency of the call, and last week we started to look at the deception of the enemy. Amen. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. So we ended last week by looking at the fact that they deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So the, and we said that the call of God to holiness and the suffering of Christ to redeem us are counted as nothing because these certain men seek to lead us back to living after the flesh. Amen. Praise God. So we are looking at a situation where there are persons who said all that Christ did, all his pain, and so on are not necessary because really there is no, some say there is no hell, some say there is no judgment, some say God is too loving to punish people, some say God predestined those who are going to save and, and those who are going to be destroyed. So in other words, Jesus never really make a difference. Amen? The life and death and the resurrection of Christ was not, did not make a difference. Now in verses 5 to 7, we see the examples 
of how God treats ungodliness. So in verse 5, we see the men. Amen. In verse 6, we see the angels. And in verse 7, we see the communities. So God will punish an individual for going against his word. But God will punish a whole community, whether it be a country or a city. So, for example, when the cry of Nineveh, the wickedness of Nineveh came before God, he had to send his servant to warn them. Amen? Praise God. But in the case of Sodom and Gomorrah, he sent angels to warn them. But they would not listen to the angel. And when Lot went, the Bible said he seemed to them as one that mocked. So God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. But God is not only punishing men in our humans. He punishes angels. Amen. And so when you go back to verses 5 um, to 7, what you see here, let's look at them. So in verse 5, he said, The Lord, having once saved the people out of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. So God went down into Egypt, and by great signs and miracles, turning water into blood, flies, uh, lies, and boils, and darkness, and hail, and all of that. Brought his people out a mighty hand and stretched out arm. Opened the Red Sea before them and destroyed the Egyptians with pursuit. You would have thought having gone to so much trouble, God would say, no, no why don't we just uh, make them go on? No. But when they murmured, God's anger was aroused. Amen. So they said they wanted... Um, meat, God filled the ground with meat. And as they started to eat, God started to kill them. At one time, God sent scorpions among them that were stinging them and they were dying. When they made the golden calf, Moses came down and said, Who is on the Lord's side? And when the people said, He says, Put your, your sword on every man, kill him, brother. 3,000. So, the Jude is warning us that don't believe that because you're baptized and filled that you can live anywhere and God will not, will not um, hold you accountable. Amen. He said, having brought the people out of Egypt, at one point he said to them, listen Moses, move from before me, kill off all of them. And Moses had to beg, plead for them. And you know, so Moses pleaded for them. Moses not plead for them. I said, why God give them a blind? You know? I'll give them a chance. Moses said, for your great name's sake, if the people hear that you kill them up, they are going to say that because you could not bring them in, that's why you killed them up. So your name. And when you go in the book of Ezekiel, you see the Lord say, I do not this for your sake. But for my great name's sake, when he promised to restore them out of Babylon. Amen? So, as individuals, let us understand that God does not have any favorite child. God doesn't have anyone who... It will always get to get away. Those of us who are parents who have many children, we have to guard ourselves against this. Because there is always a one child who you no know, trouble and you just that one is always, but the other one and why? But God don't have that problem. When David sinned, the man after God's own arm, God said, I say, No, you did this secretly. Because nobody knew. God could have just stepped back and said, all right, David, now do it again. God said, no, because God is a holy God. And if God was willing to judge David, Moses, Moses did not curse God, you know. He did not blaspheme. He did not cover an idol. 
God simply said, go and speak to the rock. And Moses struck the rock. And God said, because it has sanctified him, you will not go in. Abraham, the man God called friend. When Abraham went to Hagar and Hagar got pregnant, God said, I don't know what that is. That's not the one I promised. The one I promised must come from Sarah. Adam and Eve, created by the hand, physically, literally, with the hand of God, sinned against God, and God drove them out. The point we must not lose, God does not have favorites. God is not partial. God is just. We read it on Sunday in the book of Ezekiel. God said, if a man does righteousness all his days and turn and does wickedness and is taking his wickedness, I will not remember the righteousness. But at the same time, a man who does wickedness all his days, turns from his wickedness, does what is right, and is taking his righteousness, I will not remember his wickedness. God is just have a rule and God live by him who rule. Amen. So, he said, let me put you in remembrance. Let me bring it back to your memory. I want to. Then he said, and don't believe it, stop you. He said, the angels, so you never get too big for God. You know, we live in a country where they say there are two set of laws. One for the rich and one for the poor. Amen. God does not have that status. God killed kings. Let me say that again. God killed kings. God raised up peasants to become kings and bring down kings to go to the road, go eat grass like animal. So when Satan and his angels rebelled against God, God did not say to them, you know something, I'm going to put you on interdiction for three months or I'm going to put you on probation for six months. God chased them out. And the Bible says, lock them in, in everlasting chains. They cannot repent. Even if they're sorry, they can't go back to God and say, God, I, God said, you do this in my heaven. You can't come back up here. And as I said the first week, these are the demons now, the angels now, who come into the assembly. And because they know they can't inherit, their role, their mission, their job is to prevent as many of us as possible from inheriting. There's a story read many years ago about the dog in the manger. The dog lay in the manger. With the manger, the way they put the grass for the ox to eat. And every time the oxen came, the dog. No, he cannot eat the grass. But he's preventing those who would eat it. And Jesus said one time of the Pharisees, You lock up the kingdom of heaven against men because you are not going in yourself. And you are preventing those. Who want to go in from going in. So the angels which kept not their first estate. Now in the realm of men many times things happen. And because it's not known publicly. It's kind of swept under the carpet. So there is no, there is no level you can reach in God. Where you become so holy. That you become exempt from divine discipline. There is no bishop, no apostle, no seer, no prophet, no preacher, no pastor, no teacher, no nobody in the church of the living God who can violate God's law and believe that status will exempt them. It's not going to happen. Because Jude knew that the heart of man is prone to pride. And Jude knew that as, as it went on, 
you would have persons, and we see it happening now. Men boast of what they have done for God. You didn't get that one. Because I didn't get the amen I expected. Men boast of what they have done for God. You know what the name Yahweh means? It means I don't need nobody. Now what can you, there's a song, what is a song or a book? That said, what do you, what do you give to somebody who has everything? Anybody have that problem? You're trying to buy a gift. You can't buy a clothes because the person has three closets and them are overflowing. You can't buy shoes. You can't buy perfume. You can't buy jewelry. You can't buy. They have about six phones and three TV and five laptops. And, and you wonder who buy it. Just buy them a rose and done. Because <laughs> no matter how many of it, it's going to wilt after a time. But the point is, people both. I remember hearing a story once about a pastor who was supposed to be handing over the assembly to a new pastor. And the tradition of that organization was that the new pastor would come, would thank the congregation for the privilege of serving them for X amount of years, and then hand over to the new pastor and invite them to support their new pastor. So I would come and say, Pentecostal Lighthouse, and it has been my privilege to serve you for these amount of years, and thank you for your support, and I know that we could not have achieved what we achieved without you. Now we are introducing um, Evangelist Thomas as a new pastor. I'm going to expect you to support him as much as you support her, as much as you supported me, and I will, and, and you understand, and you hand over and then say, you come and address the congregation. The man came with a file folder. And he started to list out his achievement. When I came here, the membership of the church was X. And in five years, I made it into Y. When I came here, we used to have this. And now we have that. That's not the attitude that God wants. If all this is done by the Holy Ghost, what really have I done? God said, I'm going to lead my people to the promised land. Moses got him upset and he said, you're not going in. Did they get in? Or did he come to the bank and say, boy, people... I wanted Moses to lead him, but since he's not going in, why? So no see if we can swim cross. Who can make it, make it? And they said at that time, Jordan overflowed his bank, so nobody can cross it. <laughs> That's how God approached. He said, the angels which kept not their first estate. So he, he judges men, individuals. He judges angels. But then he goes further. He said, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, God judges communities and nations. The psalmist said, happy is the nation whose God is the law, is the Lord. So many times we believe that's because government wicked or inept or thief, why countries suffer. But there are times when God puts a curse upon a country because their traditions and their mores and their ways are odious to him. It's think. Um... Some time ago, my family came, and as usual, when they're coming, I buy the whole house and everything, because I expect that. But every, after a time, they go. And I don't know if you know, cabbage is one of the stinkiest things with it rotten. 
So I bought a bag that had vegetables and carrots it and cabbage and all and things in it. And of course, they come, they didn't finish it, and the cabbage started to deteriorate. When you open the fridge, there's no point trying to separate it. I just take the whole bag and throw in the garbage. And then I had to take up the whole garbage bag immediately and carry it outside. You couldn't make it stay till in the morning. So there are times when a group of people, so he mentioned Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah, and he treated Sodom and Gomorrah the same way he treated Nineveh. He sent somebody to warn them. They got the warning. Just like Nineveh. The thing is that Nineveh repented. Sodom didn't. Amen? And we see the end or the difference in the end between the two. So the point is, God wants us to understand. Amen? No, and I say to persons, and I'm very um, conscious of what I'm saying when I say it. There's a verse we often quote where we say, um, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. And many times when things get hot in Jamaica, I hear many persons of the Christian faith quoting that verse and praying fervently. But I tend to read what is written rather than be guided by what is said. And one of the things that you'll hear me say it frequently, when it comes to the use of pronouns in the Bible, I go by what I learned from back in about second form at high school, about pronoun and antecedent nouns. It simply says when you see a pronoun, it refers unless logic or context dictate otherwise to the last antecedent known. So they will turn, pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Who is the there? My people who are called by my name. I can't sit down here and pray for God to just ignore the murdering that's going on and Jamaica just nice. That would violate the righteous law of God. It would mean that having come, Jesus Christ doesn't need anybody to repent because he, when he prayed, he said, neither pray if I for you but for all those who believe in you, through my words through you, he makes sure say, it is going to pass down from the apostles and those who believe the apostles and those who believe those who believe the apostles right down to me who believe somebody who believe somebody who believe somebody. Well, we have to stop at, at 8.30, so I'll stop right there. But that's the point. Amen. So God is not asking us when he said to pray for kings and those who are in authority. He tells you why. That ye may lead a peaceable life. So we pray for them so that we can live in peace. It's not that the sins are going to be ignored. So all these men, the angels were Punished by God for ungodliness. So this is a warning to us not to take the grace of God for granted. And let me just, for those who came in afterwards, I forgot to bring the projector. But of course, this will be uploaded so you'll be able to go back and look at it later. Amen. God is merciful, but he will not ignore those 
who sin willfully. These episodes are set forth for an example. Look at Hebrews 4. Go to Hebrews chapter 4. And we're going to look at verses 1 to 11. I want us to understand how God runs his economy. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into the dress, any of you seem to come short of it. No one to let us spend some time on that. He stopped and let us, he had just finished talking about what happened to the Israelites when they exalted the Sabbath day above the righteousness of God and did not come into the rest that God had promised because they were stuck. And he's now saying to the church, let us therefore what? Fear. No, it doesn't mean we're going to walk about with our knees knocking and our hands trembling. It means that we're going to take careful attention to how we operate the kingdom of God because we cannot put God in a box like a genie and expect to pull him out when we want him. So it's a list of promise being made to us, being left to us have entered into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. I did a study some time ago on this, on this Sabbath. But let me just quickly say here. There are three levels of Sabbath in scripture. And if, if you can find that, it's on, it's on YouTube. If not, you can all that. And I pray you to go over it again. The first was the Sabbath of the flesh. The seventh day rest, where every seventh day, the former slaves were working 24-7 with not enough material to cover what they used to do, but expected to do more. God said, you know something? I'm going to demonstrate that I'm in charge. I'm giving you one day off. Now, we are living in the second level of the Sabbath. That's the Sabbath of the Spirit. Because in the book of Amos, God told us that the Sabbath, the seventh day keeping people, spent the seventh day planning how to thief on the first day. When will the Sabbath be passed on the new moon so we can go and sell the need a pair of shoes, or, or, or sell little for a pair of shoes, make the, making the, the, the shekel great and the effort small. We are small down the side and I raise up the price. So even though they were resting the body, their spirits were still active in sin. So with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we are now in the Sabbath of the Spirit. Where our spirits rest while the Spirit of God rules in our life. Amen? But there is a rest remaining for the people of God. The Bible said that they remain in there for rest. So the Sabbath of the soul is what's coming. When you're in that, so now in Israel rested the body. But that wasn't helping. We rest the spirit. And when the spirit is resting, the body can be afflicted and the spirit don't get disturbed. That's why Paul and Silas, locked in the innermost prison after being beaten, could be singing and praising. Peter, who was supposed to die the next year, was having a stand up. He was not up all night wondering what going to happen to me. I remember hearing once, I think it was um, John Wycliffe, I think it was, who was to be executed. And some of his friends came to console him, you know, to... And while they sat there, the man stretched out his finger and put it in the flame of the candle. And his friend watched in shock and amazement as the candle burned the fingers to the bone. Then he said to them, if this cannot hurt me, what can they do? Because when you're burning your finger to the bone, you're suffering Maybe two, three, four minutes of pain. They're going to chop off your head along that tech. Amen. 
He said, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. This is from verse 2 of Hebrews 4. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into the rest, as he said, I have sown in my wrath if they shall enter into my rest. So when the people sinned in, in Numbers chapter, I think it's 14, when they came back and said to Moses, we can't make it. God said, they will not enter into my rest. So obviously, even though they were keeping the Sabbath for 40 years before they all died, none of them got rest that God had promised. So obviously, the seven-day Sabbath is not the rest. No, Paul is telling us who have the rest of the Spirit that we should be careful that we don't enter into the rest. So obviously, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is not the final rest. It's not the rest God has in mind. So we don't get highty tighty and over ourselves because we speak in tongues. For we which have it do enter into it, as I said, I have sworn my rod. Although the works were finished on the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day and his wife, and God did rest his seventh day from all his work. And in this place again, if thou shalt enter into my rest, seeing therefore that it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached. Entered nothing because of unbelief. The Sabbath keeping Jews did not enter the rest. And again, he limited a certain day saying, listen, it, in David, remember, the law came by Moses. You want us to run some timelines? Moses gave them the law. And then led them another 40 years. After 40 years, they were under judges for 400 years. How much we on? Any good man sleep first in there? 440, right? After that, they were under Saul for another 40 years. How much we got now? 480. Then David came. And this prophecy of the rest was given by David. So obviously, it could not apply to what they were doing for the past 480 years. He says, saying in David, today, not 400 years ago, not last week, today, after so long a time. And it saying, in other words, Paul is saying, if after all this time, God is still talking about today, if you, if you will. Obviously, Paul is saying that if what we were doing before was the rest, he could not come. I couldn't come to you, Brother Stephen, I said, today if you come to church, you're here already? <laughs> you're here already? It, I would sound foolish. But I bet if you, are, if you come to Bible study tonight, you, you're here already? He said, today, if you will end, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest for the people of God. For he that is entered into rest, listen this, he has also ceased from his own works. As God did from his. When you're resting, you not working. So that's why I said we know of the rest of the spirits. Because our spirits become subdued to the spirit of Christ. So the Holy Ghost works in us. If we allow him. And our spirits rest. So I hear the sister testify that before she got saved, she had an anger problem. I remember Sister Winsome testifying, late Sister Winsome, that she used to chastise and chase her children with bad words and all of that. But when she got saved, something changes when our spirits rest. But that is not the final rest. 
And that's what Jude is warning us about. Don't get complacent about we what we ought to have now. Because better is ahead. And there are persons who have a vested interest in preventing us from accessing and attaining that. That's why Paul said, having preached all to all his people and setting up church left, right, and center, I think only probably uh, 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 only Paul could set up more church than Pastor Simon. He said, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest having preached unto others, I myself be a castaway. He said, I call not myself to have attained, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching for the things that are ahead, I press. That's why Jews have to earnestly contend. I don't know how many of you follow sports, especially football. But I have seen matches that were won, lost in the last few minutes of the game. I have seen the other day at the African Cup of Nations, a team was leading until the 87th minute by two goals. And by the 91st minute, they had lost the game. In four minutes, they went from two goals up to one goal down. And that was how the match ended. Paul said, we, we can, you don't cruise control into this. You have a press. And Jude is saying, there are people who have a vested interest. They stand up in front of you like brick wall. So you not only have to press, you have to push them down. So in verse 9, they remain in the rest of the people of God. For he that is entered the rest. Oh, in verse 11. Let us labor therefore. Enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example, listen to this word, of unbelief. What were the unbelief that the Jews had that prevented them from entering into the rest? The unbelief was that their God was not big enough to defeat the giants of the land. That was the unbelief, you know. We saw the sons of Enoch and we were like grasshoppers in our own eyes. How do we look in God's eyes? Sister Zoe, how do you look in God's eyes? You don't know? You need to start asking him. Make that a part of your prayer. Sister Daly, make that a part of your prayer. God, how do I look in your eyes? And if God says, you look like you want to go to heaven, but the way you behave, now so and so, you must have the humility and the desire to say, God, where have I fallen short? And by your grace and your spirit, do, I beg you, help me fix it. Praise the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 to 11. I wish I had a second mic. I could ask somebody else to help me, but no, no problem. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1 to 11. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant that all who are all that all of Father under the cloud and all parts of the city. Remember, the Corinthians were not Jews. Corinth was not a Jewish city. So when Paul is now saying that, I, I come here, I preach the gospel, you've heard about all the wonders of Israel, let me, what you hear on Instagram, or Google, or WhatsApp, or TikTok, or X, is the story. Here are the facts. All our fathers were under the cloud. 
There was not one Israelite coming out that God looked at the one and said, no, we might as well just stay. Not one single one. The Red Sea parted for all of them. Manna fell for all of them. The pillar of fire lighted all of them. The pillar of cloud shadowed all of them. Water flowed from the rock for all of them. Bitter water became sweet for all of them. Nations were destroyed before all of them. So there was not one Israelite who could say, boy, boy, God now do nothing for me, nothing now go on for me as well. All were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and the sea. All ate the same spiritual meat. All drank the same spiritual drink. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. And in verse 6, no, these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither being idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. That is talking about the episode that they made the golden calf. calf. And there are some Bible scholars who believe that the expression rose up to play was a sexual orgy. They weren't playing dandy shandy. I was stuck in the mud. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpent. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. No, all these things happen unto them for examples and they are written for our admonition. In other words, it happened to them back then. I don't have a golden calf. I don't even know what manna look like. I see them send something every once in a while in the back and then call it manna. I don't know if that's what fell from heaven. I doubt it because the Bible says look like coriander seed. This one looks like rice. But that's, a, that's, a, that's a, not the point. But they are written for our admonition. In other words, what I should take I don't expect water out of the rock or manna from the sky. But I expect that I am going to believe God and obey God and follow God if I want to be among God's people. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. Jesus. Unto whom the ends of the world are come. Amen. And the final scripture, 2 Peter 2 verses 1 to 8. And this is where we're going to segue back to Jude. But there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. Who privily or secretly or subtly or silently kind of under the table. Bringing damnable here heresies. Even denying the Lord that bought them. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. We're going to see later when we talk about speak evil of dignities. And I think I mentioned last week that when they speak evil of dignities, we're not talking dignitaries. Dignitaries are the people. Dignities are the things that are dignified. The heart. That our sisters wear and the natural hairstyle. The men who do wear their pants above their pelvic girdle, which is where I was told a boy your waist is. You understand? Who decide that we want to shave and keep our low cut here and, and don't come in here with things curly, curly up and, and looking like um, worm a yeah, growth on our head top? Like Medusa the Gargon. 
They're going to speak evil of men who married one woman for 50 odd years and never cheat on her. And women who, remain, who, 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 who are obedient and respectful to their husbands. They're going to speak evil of single people who decide to remain sexually inactive and, uh, 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 and modest until the time that God joins them together in holy matrimony. They're going to talk about it. They're going to speak evil when they get up every Sunday morning at God church when much up on, when much up on TV. They're going to speak evil. But let's not go back to Judah. Let's not talk about this. And through covetousness shall they with fain word make merchandise of you. Them selling you to Satan. And they grow materially rich. And you become a spiritual derelict. Because when you sell a man something, you know, business when you do it, I'm as long as they pay you. Praise God. Whose judgment now for a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spare not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So don't believe, and I say to people all the while, the angel of favor about not in the lake of fire. That is ahead of them. They, when they say they are cast to hell, it means they are locked up in their spiritually dead. They can no longer be revived in the spiritual life. That's why Jude said they are locked up in chains of an everlasting darkness. They can't repent. No matter how they regret it, they can't repent. But he says, Peer not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, condemning them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that should live ungodly, and deliver just Lot, just Lot, no, the just there is not an adverb, it's an adjective. What do I mean? It, never, it doesn't mean it delivered only Lot, because we know Lot and his two daughters got out. But Lot was a just person. So he delivered Lot the just person. And how you know? He was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. How many of us when you see the ways of the world, it upset our spirit? Or uh, are uh, we just say, boy, is every, every man do what we want? I'm not trouble nobody. I just go serve my God. That's selfish Christianity, you know that. Selfish Christianity. Our job is to tell them. Tell them. Even when they will not hear you, tell them. Even if they don't receive something like that, tell them for me. Amen? So verse 8 now, as we go back to the book of Jude. Verse 8 is very instructive. He said, likewise also these filthy dreamers, we're going to end with this and pick it up next week. Defile, the, these are the three methods of operation. And we're going to spend, well, not next week. Next week is when our youth week starts, right? And the following week is normally after a week, we have a rest week. So we pick it up sometime, Lord, tarrying in the future. And those of us who may not be here because they have other things to prepare for. Can I always read it and can I see it on YouTube? Right, Sister Gabby? <laughs> Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. And I end with this. 
So this verse identifies the three manifestations of these intruders. While we may not be able to identify them by looking at them because they remember they're creeping unawares. That means they look like us. Remember I said that the first week? If they, were, if they didn't look like us, they couldn't come in unawares. We can do so by their actions as Jesus told us in Matthew 7, 16 to 20. Amen? In Matthew 7, 16 to 20, Jesus gave us a formula for identifying the persons who are not living what they are saying. He said, ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth, fruit, forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot... Let me, let me pass again and, and rewind the part. A good tree cannot, not will not, not may not, not should not, not probably not. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good food is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. So the three things that I close. They defile the flesh. There is a physical and spiritual misuse and mistreatment of, all of, the body, of their bodies. All of a sudden, the body no longer is a holy temple for the Holy Ghost. The body is my body, and I can shake my booty anytime I want. It's my body. If I want to have an abortion, it's my body. If I want to link up with another man, it's my body. You can't judge me. It's my body. So there is a physical and spiritual misuse and mistreatment of their body. Again, if you follow sports, the minute somebody win, run a little race, a prep school and win, they full of tattoo from their ear top to their foot bottom. Anybody notice that? They pierce, they pierce through like somebody shoot them up. Everything bore up, bore up, nose bore, yai bore. I, see, I remember praying at Wildman Street, a lady one, one Sunday, and her nose bored, her nose bored across her ear, so, round here, so about three, and so about four, the hair start from office and come round here, so, all her navel bore. And I've heard of ladies boring up their private parts. And tattoo left, right, and center. And I've always, and, I've always wondered, <coughs> could I really love a woman who has on, the, on her stomach, I forever belong to John, when my name is Claude? <laughs> Defile the flesh. They despise dominion. Ladies, I, I, I just throw that in because just in case you, 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 you get the urge, understand this. Circumstances change. And uh, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, the, the only thing more uh, unreliable than man is mountain donkey. And I speak as, as, as one who has been a man for 59 years. I was born one and I'm not changing course. Despise dominion. They constantly and consistently speak against leadership and do not like to respect or be subject to authority. Right? Turn to 1 John 2, 19. John writes that they went us out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went us that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So persons who used to love to leave church or start them one thing, watch them. 
You watch them. And finally, they speak evil of dignities. As I said earlier, they do not speak against dignitaries, but against dignities or dignified behavior. This is like Simon, the former leper, speaking against the woman who anointed Jesus' feet. These criticize and ridicule the thing the saints do to glorify God or to demonstrate his holiness. So next week, I will... <laughs> Next Bible study, I will pick up on these three and alter the three examples. He said, woe unto them, for they have gone the way of Cain. They run, um, they run eagerly after the error of Balaam. So there's a way of Cain, the error of Balaam, and the gainsaying of Korah. These are three examples that the writer gives. The way of Cain, the error of Balaam, and again, saying of Korah. So we pick it up there next time. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming to join us tonight for Bible study. And those who will listen online. As we hand over to... <laughs> I call her the acting pastor. <laughs> Sister, minister... Diane Dixon, God bless her as she comes. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. We want to thank our teacher tonight. Praise the Lord. And it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I want to be holy, holy like you. I want to be holy, holy like you. I want nothing less than your holiness. I want to be holy, holy like you. I want to be righteous. Righteous like you. I want to be righteous. Righteous like you. I want nothing less than your righteousness. I want to be righteous. Righteous like you. I want to be holy, I want to be holy, holy like you. I want to be holy, holy like you. I want nothing less than your holiness. I want to be holy. Holy like you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's our prayer. To be holy like Jesus. To be righteous like Jesus. Praise God. Just to be like Jesus. Praise the Lord. So it's good to be in Bible study one more time. I just want to welcome everyone that is here tonight. Praise the Lord and those who are joining in our Bible study, the Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be giving some announcements while our usher prepare to come to receive the offering for tonight. Praise the Lord. So, of course, today is Wednesday. Nothing tomorrow. But, however, on Friday that is coming, the 26th of January, we are planning to support the Youth Week service at Cassava River UPC, and that's in Glengough. Um, I think some persons have already given names. If you have not given your names as yet, and you are planning to go, we have to know tonight so that we can make the necessary preparations. So that's Friday for Glengough. And then on Sunday, the usual rightly dividing the word. That's heard on Fame 95 FM at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. In the sanctuary is prayer meeting, 7.30 a.m., the premiering of our YouTube service. 
8 a.m., we have Sunday school both at um, right on this compound and also in the various areas where we have our extension Sunday school classes. And then we will meet at 9.15 a.m. where we'll have our morning service. So I want to remind you for Sunday coming that there'll be no evening service right here. We are expected to be supporting the Youth Week service at Faith Sanctuary in Brayton. So that's for Sunday night. Praise the Lord. And then on Monday, we are hoping to visit and to support the Youth Week service at Allman Hill. So that's Calvary Apost Apostolic Tabernacle. That's in Allman Hill. And of course, that is Upper St. Andrew. So that's for Monday. And of course, oh my God, I can't believe it is next week, Sister Zoe. Drum rolling with the fingers. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Will be our annual Youth Week. And this is Youth Week 2024. Praise the Lord. Starting the 31st of January. And we will take it up to February 4th. So that's January 31 to February 4th. Praise the Lord. And that's just next week. Praise the Lord. So let's... um. Remember in our prayers, Bridget, please, to pray for souls to be saved. Praise the Lord. And also pray for the speakers that are expected to be here. Um, the whole planning of the services, the moderating and all of that. We want to pray and ask the Lord to have his own way in these services and for souls to be saved. So that's our Youth Week 2024. And... Um, Upcoming, all right, so all services will be streamed live. Praise the Lord. Bless God. Um, let's remember to also invite someone out to our Youth Week services. All right. Praise the Lord. Um, upcoming events I don't want us to forget. Please, coming the 11th of February will be our annual saints meeting. It is called saints meeting. So all the saints, all the members of Pentecostal Lighthouse, you're expected to be at this meeting. Praise the Lord. So that's the 11th of February. And then from the 12th of February to the 15th will be our annual national conference Amen. in Monique. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bless God. So let's prepare, praise the Lord, for these events. As Of course, we have to depend on the Lord to give us life so that we are able to. Praise the Lord. Bless God. Could our usher please come? Thank you, Jesus. So Brother Foskins will be going around and receiving the offering. Praise the Lord. Thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you have done. I am so blessed. My soul is at rest. Praise God. Thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you have done. I am my soul, my soul is at rest. Oh Lord. I give you thanks. Praise the Lord. So we thank the Lord for the offering that has been received. We are also thanking the Lord for, praise the Lord, all you bridging who have come out tonight. We are encouraging you to just keep it going just like that. I also want to encourage you 
just to try to say if you can pull another bridge in with you on a Wednesday night. Praise the Lord to encourage another member to be here for a Bible study. It's very important in learning the words of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bless God. Sunday school and the Sunday morning service is not sufficient. Bible study is very, very, very important. Praise the Lord. So I want to commend you for making that special effort in coming out. And we want to maintain it like this and even to be much better than this. Praise the Lord, everyone. All right. So including myself, we're going to devote that. We're going to work on it. Call a bridging. So look and you see who is not here and you just... Select a bridging and you ensure that you encourage them, you call them, you remind them about Bible study. Bless the Lord. And not just a bridging, but even a visitor. All right? Praise the Lord. We're going to be praying. Anyone with any needs tonight, you want us to? Yes, Sister Susan's hand is up. Anyone else? Yes. Um, those who are grieving, Deacon Williams. Yes. And the Brainsford family. Praise the Lord. And also... Um, Sister Henry's family, um, yes, who are grieving. Praise the Lord. Can we stand? We're going to be praying at this time. Pray for each other. Remember the needs and also pray the blessing and the offering that was received tonight. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done. We are so blessed, mighty God. This love that you have for us and this great peace that you give us on the inside. Thank you for bringing us into your house one more time, for bringing us to Bible study. I want to thank you for your servant whom you have been using, mighty God, to expound your words to us. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We pray that you continue to bless him, continue to inspire him, to move upon him, mighty God, so that, Lord Jesus, when we hear your words, they will pierce our hearts, mighty God, to make us to be better Christians and better individuals for you, Lord God. We thank you tonight, Lord Jesus. Remember the needs, the hands that were raised, mighty God, Sister Suzette, Lord Jesus. We also want to remember those who are grieving, our dear deacon, Williams and family, Lord Jesus. We want to also pray for the newly added member to the Williams family, Lord God. Remember him tonight. Remember Jesse, Lord, and every other family. Remember Jesus. Remember the Henry's family, mighty God. I pray, oh God, even the Brainsford family, as they are grieving, Lord, that you will continue to comfort them in a way that no one else can but you. Remember those who are in the hospitals, God, those who have to be on the jobs right now. Oh God, remember those who are working our security forces, mighty God. Oh God, our firefighters, Jesus. Remember those who are imprisoned, Lord God, who don't have this freedom as us, that you will touch them, Lord. You bless them and you will save them. We thank you for this offering that was received tonight. The hands that have stretched out to give, you continue to bless. And those who were not able to give, that you'll bless, that they'll be able to give another time. We thank you for this community, Lord Jesus. God, you can see what is happening on the outside even right now. Jesus, we are praying against every forces of darkness. There is none other power but you. You are all powerful, Lord Jesus. All the forces of darkness, the principality, oh God, all principalities, mighty God, rulers, of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Nothing can come before you. Nothing can stand against you. And so even right now, I pray for even these young men on the outside, mighty God, that you will touch them, Lord Jesus, that rather than being on the outside, Jesus, they will come on the inside and be a part of this Bible study, a part of your services. As we prepare to go, go with us. Cover us under your blood. Guide us, mighty God, and continue to keep us from all harm and all danger. Bless us even right now as we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. And can we all say in Jesus' name? Oh, the benediction, praise the Lord. With your right hands raised, let the words of my mouth after three, two, three, let the words of my mouth 
and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The Lord Jesus bless you. Greet each other before you leave.